In this video, I'm gonna show you how I decorate and deliver this $1,600 wedding cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. And just a note, if you wanna skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters below. I was asked to recreate a design that I did years ago. I will put it over here and she wanted a different topper and some modifications to this design. And I'm gonna show you how I decorate this cake. I am starting with my cakes fully baked, filled, and iced. They are iced in buttercream icing and they are put in the refrigerator. I always refrigerate all of my cakes. I have a video talking about how I refrigerate cakes and how I work with them and I will link that below but the icing is solid, so when I work with these cakes, I'm not going to mess them up. And this is just a voiceover tutorial. I will link videos that I go into deeper detail of some of the techniques that I do in here in the description below. So let's get into the video. I am decorating this cake with marshmallow fondant, but look at this, it is not ready to be used. So I have some Tylos powder here, I'm sprinkling a little bit on there, and I just wanna knead it together and this Tyler's powder is gonna help the fondant uh, just be smoother. It's gonna be a lot easier to work with. So I'm gonna knead this together. After I let it sit for about 15 minutes, look at it, it's so much smoother. All those marks in there are gone. So I wanna roll it out into a log and roll it out really long. I have my ruler to make sure that I'm rolling it tall enough and I'm making the drapes right now. So I'm getting some cornstarch down on the countertop so the fondant doesn't stick and just rolling this out as thin as I can. And you can see how thin that I rolled it out. I have my cake, this is iced in American buttercream just out of the refrigerator. And what I wanna do first is put the straws in here. I have a full stacking tutorial showing you how I stack my cakes and these are the supports that go on the bottom tier. So I will link that below. Getting some buttercream on top and then I'm gonna stack the second tier on top. Like I said, these cakes are iced in buttercream. They're in the refrigerator. I can easily handle them because the icing is cold. I am doweling the bottom two tiers a little off center, a little off to the right, which is going to just help secure the cake to the board and cover that hole with some buttercream. I'm just measuring how big I need to make these drapes and I wanna put this on a turntable. It's gonna make it a lot easier. So I have this fondant. I'm cutting a straight edge on the bottom and they have to be at least six inches tall. So I'm making sure that this is six inches. I'm holding the six at the bottom and making like a little dotted line with the pizza cutter and then just cutting the line. So now the fondant is at least as, as, as tall as I need it to be. Cut a little square, flip it over, and I'm just gonna go zigzag back and forth, back and forth. And I want the ends to go back. Right? I don't want them to come forward. This will make sense as I do it. So put it up against the cake. I need to trim it a little bit. And now it's gonna fit. So I'm gonna press it down against the cake. The icing is solid. I'm not gonna mess it up. It's very important that the icing is solid when you do this. And I'm just moving this into place. Let's do the same thing. Flip it over, go back, and then forward, back, forward, back, forward, and always end back. So you want both ends to be folded back. It'll look so much cleaner. Pinch it at the top, have a little bit of water, put it down, and I'm like measuring it. So I'm cutting, cutting it to fit, and then just move it into place. So I want a little bit of water on the back to help it stick to the cake. And now press it down. Once I have it down, I could just move the individual pieces into place. Now I have this little tool here. I'm gonna put a ball border on here, so I wanna press the fondant down um, so I can make room for the ball border to go on top of the drapes. So I'm doing the same thing. Put it up there, I have to cut the end off. I wanna hold the scissors on an angle, that way I cut it a little flatter, and then press it down and glue it down with the water. So 
So I will link this tool below. This is the other end of a ball tool and really just making sure, like I said before, that I'm making enough room to put the ball border on. So again, I'm starting by flipping it back and forth, back and forth. I just wanna make it as even as I can. The bottom, see how the bottom is even, right? And I always end with the, the, the edges go back. Fold it over, use the scissors, cut it on an angle so it lays a little flat. Right, get a little water down. Oh, that was a little too long. So cutting it again, do you see how I hold the, the scissors to the side and it just lets the fondant sit a little flatter on the cake? I hope that makes sense. So you see the process, just doing the same thing. Let me try to show you this again. Hold the scissors on an angle, not straight up and down, on the side. And now the top is flatter and it's not gonna be sticking up over the top of the cake too much. It's getting warm so I'm going to stick that back in the refrigerator and then continue. I need the cake to be solid because when I'm pressing these drapes on here I don't want to mess the cake up and then by the magic of editing I'm all all the way done <laughs> this bottom tier. And I want to put that back in the fridge. So now I wanna make the little ball borders on here and I have the cake and I just want to make sure that I'm making these little fondant balls the right size. So that was just some water that I'm putting down on here. I'm just making a bunch of little balls, <laughs> basically. This is time consuming. It's kind of a pain in the butt because you wanna make sure that they're the same size. So if they're not the right size, sometimes I have to take a little fondant off. Sometimes I have to add a little more. They don't have to be exact. <laughs> as long as they're pretty much the same size, nobody's really gonna notice. And by the magic of editing, again, here I am, I'm finished. I had to make this one just a little bit smaller so it would fit. And there we go, beautiful. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now, I got these flowers um, on Amazon. I will find them and link them below. And I just want to do a little gold edging on it. So first, they all come wrapped up, so I need to unwrap them. I have this Rollcom Super Gold here. And what I do, I just add the powder. I will link that below. I add the powder to the cup, and then add a little bit of lemon extract and mix it together. And my paintbrush isn't too big, so I want to do, I just want to edge the petals in some gold. I'm not painting them entirely gold. So this process is a little time consuming, but it just adds a little more detail to the roses. And I always buy pre-made flowers, like no shame in my game. I am not one that likes to make flowers, so I love to buy them online. And you just have to be really careful that you're just getting the edges and not the rest of the petal. So I measured the circumference of the tier that I'm wrapping this ribbon around, and I wanna make sure that I roll this out long enough so it's gonna wrap around. I'm cutting a straight bottom edge, and I want these to be at least four inches high. So again, holding the four at the very bottom, making a little dotted line, and then cutting it. I have these three skewers. This is a little tricky because I need to make this bend, and it is so long that I need to do it the skewer way. So I'm getting a little water on the top and the bottom edge, and I'm folding it under. So I have, it's so it's a clean, it just is a cleaner look when you fold it under. And then I'm moving the skewers using the line that I created and moving it down the ribbon so I can get these little folds in here. Um, like I did with the drapes, how I folded it back and forth, it's difficult to do when you have such a long piece. And again, I'm doing the bottom edge, trying to get, get it just to look clean when you fold it under. Use your ruler and smooth it out. I'm just trying to straighten it out. So you see how I'm extending the skewers, lay it back down and continue so I get the folds in this little ribbon. And now that I have the folds in there, see how it's easier for me to bunch it? <laughs> the skewers technique is a little bit of a pain, but it, it really works for something that long. I have my cake out of the fridge, a little bit of piping gel. I'm putting this ribbon right 
like around the center of that tier. So I'm just getting some piping gel the whole way around the center. Start at the very front and I'm going to have a brooch. Is it brooch or brooch? It's brooch. <laughs> a brooch in the middle. So I'm trying to get this on here. It's a little tricky because this piece is pretty long, but I'm trying to get it so the top and the bottom are sticking to that piping gel and then where it meets in the front I'm going to cut it and put it together and now this looks ridiculous I have to work it into place so I'm using my thumb to lift it and I'm trying to I'm looking at it and I just want to make it as straight as possible pinch it in the middle that's where the little pin is going to go and then again using my thumb and just making this look a lot better than it does <laughs> and just moving the wrinkles making sure they look a lot better I have a little water and I'm just getting rid of some of the piping gel that was sticking out over the ribbon. Now I'm using that tool again, the end of that ball tool and just pressing the fondant against the cake so it's sticking to the piping gel and I'm pressing this down so I can push the little pin on here. I got these on Amazon. I can find them and link them below. They are so pretty and they really weren't that expensive and I like these two the best. So I'm gonna press it into the fondant so I can make an impression. And then I want to get a glob of piping gel behind it to help hold it against the cake and I'm pressing it against here. To give it a little extra security, I have these toothpicks and I'm sticking them through the little openings. This piece is so busy, you're not going to be able to see that there's um, a little bit of toothpick sticking out, but it's just going to prevent that piece from falling off. And look how pretty. So now I want to continue stacking. So I'm measuring for my straws, marking how long they have to be, cutting the marker off, and then getting all the straws in the cake, making sure it's level. And again, I will link my stacking video where I go into full detail and putting on the third tier. Man, this thing is going to start to get heavy. Now I'm doweling on the left side, so not in the center. The bottom three tiers are doweled on the left. Now I want to put these roses on here. So I hold it up to the cake first to see how it fits and then get a little bit of icing on the back and stick it to the cake. So I like to hold it up first because sometimes I have to move it in a different position and then put the icing on. And this last rose was broken and that was perfect because I needed it to be a little smaller and I was just able to squeeze it in there. Now I printed out this little swirly. I measured how tall that section was and I printed out the right size. I'm going to use my Dresden tool. This cake is solid. The icing is solid. It's cold. I'm not going to mess it up. I'm using the curved end of my Dresden tool to trace this little swirly pattern and it's going to transfer onto the buttercream. This is a buttercream iced cake. It's not covered in fondant. So I just need to be really careful that I'm holding it straight in place. And look at that. There's the pattern. And I'm going to trace it with some icing. So starting, I'm going to continue it around the rest of the cake. So I'm starting the next one where the other one ended and then going to the other side. And it almost touches in the back. I, I was a little off on my measurements, but that's okay. That's the back of the cake. No one's going to see it, right? <laughs> now, I have a... Uh, piping tip number four on this icing bag, and this is gold. This is not yellow uh, icing that's in here. This is buttercream icing. Twist the bag, rest my elbow on something, and that way my arm's not going to shake, and I'm going to support my wrist with my other hand. I hate piping. <laughs> it's so difficult because I start to shake, and my heart beats, and I don't breathe, but this does help a little bit. So I'm going to trace this line and I'm going to stop at all of the little intersections so I can wipe off the tip on a paper towel, take a little breather, <laughs> you know, and then continue, right? It's a lot easier to do this in little sections, at least for me it is, rather than to do an entire line. And when I'm piping on here, I want to make sure that I'm not pressing it flat against the cake. I want it to stick out a little bit because I'm going to be painting it gold. Do you see how I'm stopping in the little intersections there? This was sticking down a little bit. So look, I'm using that toothpick to move it into the correct place. And now I have some water and a small paintbrush and a little paper towel. And I just like to smooth my buttercream because wherever I lifted the bag off of the cake, it there's like a little point forms. And I like to use a wet, pa uh, wet paintbrush to push that buttercream down and just smooth it out. And I'm trying to get everything in the correct position. Now I have my cake out of the fridge again. And I want to paint this gold. So again, I have that roll come super gold and this paintbrush is a little thinner 
and this already has some of the lemon extract in here getting some gold on here this icing is solid because it's out of the refrigerator i'm not going to mess it up and i'm just painting the all of the the gold swirls with the rollcom gold now this is a little time consuming but it does end up looking so pretty and once i do one coat then i'm going to go back and do a second coat um, wherever i feel like it needs to be a little deeper. And now I have, I'm have i dipping the paintbrush in the lemon extract and I can rub it against the cake anywhere where some gold transferred. Now I need to make another blue ribbon that's gonna go on the fourth tier. So I'm doing the same thing with the skewer technique, you know, rolling it out, making my little folds in here. And I folded the top and the bottom. Did I do that yet? I don't know if I did, but <laughs> wait, I'm folding it in. And now I'm cutting the top and the bottom because they were a little too big and I flipped it over this time. And now I'm gonna fold the top and bottom over so I don't have that rough edge. I hope this is making sense. Now I have this cake out of the fridge. I did remove the the cake from the tape on the board and put a piece of non-skid pad underneath this cake so I can easily lift it because once I put this ribbon on, I don't want to mess up the cake. So I'm getting a little piping gel around the middle and I'm doing the same thing that I did before. I'm starting in the front and I'm just moving, man maneuvering, manipulating whatever this into place, cut it where it meets in the very front and then I gotta make it look pretty. So using my palette knife, using my thumb, I'm trying to lift it or push it down and trying to make it as straight as possible. So I am eye level with this cake right now and I'm trying to make it look as straight and neat and pretty. Same thing, press the pin into the fondant to make the impression, get a glob of piping gel on here and stick it to the cake and use the toothpicks in there for a little security blankets. And that looks pretty. Sticking this back in the fridge, being careful because it's not taped to the cake board. Now, last minute decision, I decided to cover this top tier in marshmallow fondant because I am not gonna be able to stack this whole thing. I'm gonna have to stack it when I get there and I don't wanna mess it up. If it's just buttercream, I'll mess it up. I have a tutorial showing you how I cover cakes in fondant in full detail and I am going to link that below. My little weird pinch technique to get the sharp edges. <laughs> I measured the circumference of the top tier is 18 inches, so I printed out this other swirly nine inches, so it'll fit around here. I'm marking the front of my cake and doing the same thing. This cake is solid, and this one's covered in fondant, but this technique works on fondant or buttercream as long as the cake is cold. And then tracing the line with the icing like I did before, putting it back in the fridge when I'm done so it can solidify after I uh, smooth out with, with the water paintbrush. And now I wanna put my straws in here and stack this next tier on top. So getting my buttercream down and easily lifting that cake off because I removed the tape and just making sure that this is all lined up with the front, making sure that it is level. And now I'm going to dowel the bottom four tiers through the center of the cake and just use a little buttercream to patch that hole. Getting some piping gel around the perimeter here and we're going to do some more fondant little balls around here. So around the entire cake and voila, look how fast that was. <laughs> now I wanna take a little dry brush and start to wipe off some of this corn starch on here. And now I want to get some straws in the top, very top part. Um, that way I don't have to do it when I get to the venue. Cover it with buttercream just to make sure it's all sealed. And I'm gonna put that back in the fridge. Now, the very top tier, I wanna show you what I did. So I have a, I wanna remove this from the, the tape so I can easily lift it when I get to the venue. So I'm taking it off of that cardboard circle making sure the tape is removed and then putting the non-skid pad underneath it on a cake circle. So it's not gonna shift, but it could fall off. So I need to handle this easily. You will see why I do this when I get to the venue. And again, I'm painting it gold. This was sitting in the fridge, so all of these buttercream lines are solid. And I cut two ribbons. So I cut a shorter one and a longer one and I'm folding them 
completely in half and then using my rulers to straighten it out. And I'm using Crisco on the bottom here because I'm going to put this tier on top when I get to the venue and I want to be able to move these ribbons if I need to. So where it meets in the back, make a seam and press it down with my palette knife to make sure that it's even. And I'm getting some Crisco on the back of the smaller piece and I'm gonna do the same thing, wrap it around. So you see how I folded it in half and it gives a nice little rounded edge? I just like that look. And stick that back in the fridge. Now I am packing my little kit of stuff I'm bringing with me. So I have an icing bag and I have a palette knife and some gloves a little water in case I need it. She wants it sprayed a pearl spray, so I'm bringing that with me and some paper towels. And I can't forget the topper that she sent me. And also I always bring snips just in case I need them. All right, it's delivery day. I know I look ridiculous. However, this cake is heavy and my old uh, lady parts. <laughs> that did not sound right. But my everything hurts, my elbow, my wrist. So I'm taking the proper precautions. So I have my wrist wrapped up, I have my knees, I have my weightlifting belt, and my mom who is filming for me and cracking up as I say stupid things. All right. <laughs> now you gotta lift with your legs. This is where all the squats come in handy. Jeez. All right, let's deliver it. So I already walked through to see where the cake has to go. And I'm just gonna take this trip with the small stuff first. It's nice and cool in here. Okay, so I cleared off this table. There was a bunch of flowers here, but I wanna be able to get the, the cake on here without messing anything up. So let's go get the cake. <laughs> I want to make sure that it faces forward this way and I want to get this top tier on as fast as possible. Just getting some icing so it'll stick. Nice. Ooh, I'm glad I covered that top tier in fondant because it is getting a little soft. I want to make sure it is center. Because I attached these with Crisco, I can easily push them down so it meets the top of the next tier. Can you see? It's a little dark, but if you could see that it's gapping a little bit here, so I'm just pressing down. Now she did ask for a little bit of a pearl sheen on here, so I'm just going to lightly spray it. And last but not least, putting the topper on. So I want to make sure that it's center. Beautiful. Okay. Now I can breathe a sigh of relief. I'm going to put the flowers back on the table and take a final picture and then I'll be done. So there you go. There is how I decorate and deliver a gigantic, as my boyfriend would say, stressful, large wedding cake, very heavy, but it ended up being so pretty. <laughs> the sizes of the tiers, they were from top to bottom, five inch, seven inch, nine inch, 11 and 13. Now, anytime I make cakes bigger than 10 inches, I don't tort them. So the 11 and the 13 inch, I think the 11 was three layers as well. I can't remember, but I know the bottom tier was definitely three layers of the 13. I have a video talking about different sizes and different heights of tiers that you can do and i will link that in the description below but this cake fed around 140 people so i had to order an 18 inch cake drum on amazon i will find it and link it below i can't make cakes any bigger than this my refrigerator barely fits that big 18 inch round cake board 
and I don't like, I just don't like making cakes bigger than this. You saw how heavy it was. I mean, I know I lift weights, but I can only lift so much, right? <laughs> And I don't really like to stack cakes once I get to the venue. However, the technique that I did, just being able to lift that top tier and put it on, that's fine. But I'm not going to build a cake at a venue. I delivered this. This was about three weeks ago. So it was the beginning of August. It's warm. You know, the cakes... Cakes don't like warm weather, so I just I just don't like to do it that often. <laughs> Why'd I say it like that? So luckily, this one of the reasons I took on this cake, the delivery was five minutes away. It was not very far. However, did you see how I doweled three dowels in the cake? And I know that's a little extra, but it's better to be safe than sorry. I like to make sure when I have really big, tall cakes like this that I have a couple different dowels in there just to prevent the cake from shifting or sliding or collapsing or whatever. So... I did let them know at the venue that there were three dowels in there, so they knew when they were cutting it. And real quick, shout out to my mom <laughs> for helping me with filming and coming on the delivery with me. And um, she was a little shaky and she was, <laughs> she was apologizing that her video skills aren't that good, but I really appreciate her helping me out. So the tools and the supplies that I used are going, going to be linked in the description below. And I can find that swirl picture that I used and link that as well. I think I just Googled like swirl picture or frill border or something like that. But I will, I will link the picture in the description below. So how long did this cake take to make from start to finish? It wasn't 20 minutes like the video. <laughs> so it was about seven to eight hours just baking the cakes. I baked them and put them in the freezer. And I have a video showing you how I bake and thaw and fill cakes and all that. And that'll be linked in the description. And then to fill and ice the cakes was about another five to six hours. And I think decorating it was probably about eight to 10 hours. So it was at least 20 to 25 hours working on this cake. And even with all of those long hours put into this, I did receive a message from the bride afterwards telling me how much she loved the cake. But seeing the messages and the pictures just makes all those long hours worth it. And this is definitely one of my more expensive cakes, but there was a lot of detail, a lot of time involved in this. Now, I can't tell you exactly how much to charge for your cakes. I do have a couple videos talking about pricing your cakes, and I will list that in the description below as well. So hopefully you learned something from this video. You don't have to make this exact design, but you can use some of the techniques that I did on your cakes. And if you do, please tag me on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to see the designs that you create from using these techniques. So I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And you can follow me on socials and check out my website. It's listed in the description below as well. And if you wanna stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. And remember, it's cake. It's heavy, but have fun. <laughs> I will see you on the next one. Bye.